Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today and welcome to the vlog of the Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens. I recently took a trip to Florida and this is one of the zoos that I was fortunate enough to visit. We went on our very last day, so this was actually the very last place I got to visit on my vacation, but it's the first footage that I'm getting to, so therefore it's the first video that you are seeing. I do hope you guys enjoy this vlog is meant to just be inspirational for those of you that enjoy zoos, play Planet Zoo, Prehistoric Kingdom, some of the games that we cover here on the channel. Take a look at what some habitats look like in different zoological facilities and listen to me talk about it a little bit. So if you do enjoy the video, do remember to leave a like down below. Vlogs are something that I really enjoy doing. My alternate hobby other than YouTube stuff is photography and cinematography, more so photography, not not really cinematography, but uh, my point being, I really enjoy making these videos. So if you enjoy it too, leave a like down below and let me know what your favorite animal was that you see in the vlog. Or if you are familiar with the Central Florida Zoo, let me know, did I miss anything? Have you seen any of the animals do cool things that I have not? Uh, because a few of the animals were sleeping when we walked by and I was not able to see them. What you guys just saw were, of course, the macaws. Birds are one of my favorite groups of species, uh, and I absolutely love macaws. So we actually spent a lot of time watching them and hanging out with them and watching them kind of walk around, but I really enjoyed the small little setups that they had. Something that I would like to incorporate into some of my project is those kind of little filler habitats in between, like this one here. So this aviary that's got a leopard tortoise in it, well, we could not find it though. We looked forever and we could not find it. And then it's got a couple other birds here. We're gonna go over to the sign and I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head, but they were as happy as can be jumping around, very vocal. There you go, the silvery cheeked hornbill and the cape thick knee. <laughs> Those guys are down on the floor and the hornbill is flying around, hopping around on uh, its branches and up at the top of its enclosure. These guys were very noisy as well, but I really liked how the habitat was set up with all the climbing branches and the zoo overall. I mean, being in Florida, it's a much different climate than I'm used to because I'm from San Diego. So we're very Mediterranean, very temperate. This is obviously very tropical, very humid. Let me tell you, anybody that's from Florida, your humidity and your heat almost killed me. Um, I almost didn't make it. I melted on a daily basis, uh, but it's very tropical and very lush. There's big patches of this kind of side area that's just very clearly just native growth and it makes it all shaded pretty much like I would say like 80% of the zoo is all underneath shade which was super nice with it being so hot but it just made it feel so pretty so lush and so green I really, really enjoyed it. We're walking up to the otters here. And so the otters are one of the animals we spent the most time with today. I should say otter, because there was only one of them in there. You can see he or she swam right up to the glass and kind of put their feet right there. I missed it, but I got a little bit of it. And then most of the time just spent uh, swimming upside down. At one point here, you'll see in a minute, he grabs a little palm frond. I got to speak to one of the keepers and that was the animal's enrichment for today. So the lemurs that you'll see later, as well as these otters and a couple other animals got some food that was wrapped up in palm fronds that the keepers had cut from somewhere on the property. And that was the animals uh, enrichment. So finding ways to hide food, hide what the animal would naturally be looking for, uh, encourages them to forage and gives them something to do. So here you can see he's grabbed that palm frond, he drug it over to the side. And then if you can see him through the dirty glass, it's dirty glass because it's uh, in water, but you can see him kind of munching away. He gets like a little fish and really enjoys that there. So it was really cool to get to see them uh, play with that. And then when we walk over here to the third viewing area of the otter habitat, you can see the little guy right there. He just gave himself a dirt bath. He basically got done eating his food, done swimming around. He came over here and he just rolled around in the dirt for five minutes or so, got nice and muddy, really, really dirty. And then he went ahead and jumped back into the water. So that's what you're seeing here is him just, just making a mess, <laughs> making a mess of his face, just, just rolling around. It was very, very cute. So we really enjoyed watching him kind of run around. From what I could tell, he was the only otter in there, but I don't know if they have other otters uh, that were off stage or, or anything like that. 
Walking up now, we're gonna get to see the Indian Rhino. Again, there was only one in here. I don't know if that's only because they have one or there's more um, off stage, backstage, off exhibit, whatever you wanna call it. Um, but it has a pretty cool exhibit in here uh, with the pond in the middle. And we got to see this guy do a little bit of everything, really. He walked around, he came up real close, he got in his pond, uh, and that's where we left him basically. He got in his pond, laid down with his head against one of the rocks and just kind of took a snooze in the water, which again, in the heat would be exactly where I would want to be. But around the enclosure were these branches kind of just thrown all over the place and he kind of just meandered and, and walked around, picked him up and ate him. So again, the keepers clearly had been in there this morning, scattered some of those branches around for him and then he went around Around and ate them up uh, as well as grazed on some of the grass that's already in his habitat. I again really liked this habitat. I in fact already used it as inspiration for a build that you will see in the future. I actually used it for a um, prehistoric kingdom build and made it into a dinosaur habitat because some of the dinosaurs I'm equating to elephants and rhinos and so I've been looking at their habitats as inspiration and this one uh, was really helpful in that especially with the backstage building and everything like that. But then we moved over so right in front of the otters and right in front of the rhinos kind of in this middle area are a bunch of smaller enclosures this one being I think it was the two-toed sloth you can see him right there in the center hopefully you can kind of get a glimpse of him he's got some lettuce in his hand that he is munching away on i was really excited to see him actually doing something um and then there's also the amir leopard so this guy right here is right across from the sloth right across from the uh fusa which we'll bounce back over to and see in a minute but this guy, very active. Again, the keepers had clearly just been in there and spread around some treats all over the place for him, his morning breakfast. And so he was jumping around. You'll see him here jump up onto his climbing frame. And at one point he gets all the way to the top to get some of the food that they had left for him. Absolutely beautiful. As far as I can tell, again, he's the only one. There might be another one off stage, but his name is actually Timur. I, I believe it's Timur because he's a, an Amur leopard. That's a tongue twister with his name. Um, but he is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful cat. Again, we spent a lot of time watching him because he was very active going back and forth and you can get nice up and close. Look at how effortlessly they jump. I just, I literally, I could watch them all day long uh, but he's absolutely beautiful and he had a really cool habitat what I took away from this one is when I'm building completely enclosed habitats oftentimes I feel like the roof needs to be a, um, a certain height like all the way across in a sense basically making a square or making a rectangle but his habitat was lower on the one side and then it went up to provide him a climbing section so that he could get up higher up onto the climbing platforms and stuff like that and it gave the exhibit uh, a little bit more dimension as far as like the guests looking at it uh, same thing here with the fusa the little guy walking around <laughs> he's very cute he didn't really do much but kind of walk around like this um, but you can see he's got like a little tunnel up at the top left hand corner there that goes across that middle section which looks like the keeper walkout is what I think it is I think that's how the keeper gets into both sides of the enclosure um, and then he has the other side that he can go in as well but he spent most of the time on this side he was kind of walking around and scratching um, but yeah that's what I took away from both the leopard habitat and the fusa habitat that's the other side of the fusa habitat I, be I believe as far as I could tell there was nothing in there and then we get to the ring-tailed lemurs these guys you can see the keeper just came out uh right there and i was so lucky enough to see him open the guillotine call their names and they come flying out look at that and they hop all over the place and they go right for their food wasting absolutely no time um, they know where to find it in these little containers here and then again on one of those carriers that is right underneath the front lemur is another palm frond and that is all wrapped tight and it's got some fruits and veggies all kind of mashed in there for them to fish out you can see him try to go at it and then he gives up he doesn't try very long he doesn't try very hard he gives up he goes for the the easier stuff gonna leave the most difficult stuff for last but again we sat and watched these guys for quite a while 
I'm really inspired by this little area because it was, it was a lot of animals kind of all packed together. They had it labeled as the, I think it was the cats and primates section. So it was the, um, the leopard, the fusa, and then there was a couple different lemurs, couple different monkeys. We're going to see that in just a second here. I'll, I'll flip around and we'll walk over because they also had red ruffed lemurs that were kind of hanging out and whatnot. I think that was the other benefit of getting there in the morning as well is most of the animals, it hadn't gotten that hot yet. They opened at 9 a.m. So that's what time we got there. So it wasn't too, too hot yet. And so most of the animals weren't kind of just, you know, in a heat coma as I'm sure they get to at the end of the day. They all had fans to keep them cool, which is great to see. Obviously, I think they need it in Florida. And then this habitat I really liked too, just because of the usage of the the leaves on the backdrop. I thought it looked really tropical and it reminds me that not all enclosures have to be completely chain link or just solid concrete on the back wall. You know, utilizing some of the like backdrops to make the habitat look a little bit more interesting clearly probably does nothing for the animals, but for the guests viewing, uh, I really liked it. And then here are the red ruffed lemurs kind of hanging out. They weren't out at first. So this is when I first walked up to the exhibit. I don't know if you can see it's all the way in the back, just kind of sitting there, but then we're going to cut to, I came back in a little bit and there you go. They were out on their branches kind of hanging out. They weren't really doing much, but sitting there, uh, but really cool still to see them. Another thing I really liked about this zoo is that you could get nice up and close, but there was always kind of foliage in front of the habitat. So in between you and the animal, there was always some sort of tree, bush or something like that. I imagine it gives the animals a little bit more privacy if they want it, making them maybe not feel so exposed. Now, these guys are going to be obviously animals that live in the zoo they're going to be uh, acclimated to being around people and stuff like that but it made the habitats again feel a little bit more uh, secluded kind of in some cases um, and made them kind of blend in with the, the like natural surroundings and whatnot I don't know I just I really liked all of the natural like plants and stuff that were growing all around the zoo that were clearly just um, some of them are probably purposely planted. Some of them are, are built around stuff like that. Again, just because I don't live in a tropical area. So it was really cool to be in a tropical setting for this zoo. Look at him hanging out, giving his little back a scratch. These guys have the most intense eyes, in my opinion. They're little yellow eyes. And then we moved on to uh, the area of the zoo that was not shaded. This is probably the only area in the zoo that doesn't have a lot of shade cover on there. Um, but we got to the giraffes and there are two of them in there, two or three, I forget. I think there's only two. I only see two. Um, we didn't spend a lot of time looking at these guys just because they were munching away, eating. Uh, that first one didn't want the lettuce, so the keeper gave up. I'm not sure if somebody paid for a um, interaction or anything like that, but they were munching away. They were busy with their breakfast. And right next to the giraffes are the cheetahs. These guys, I believe I heard someone say are a pair of brothers. And so there are two of them in there and just wait because I cut to a clip uh, once we were done kind of watching them and about to walk away. They settled down in the side of their enclosure and started grooming each other. And so we stayed for a little bit longer and kind of watched. But other than that, they were just patrolling their environment, uh, taking a little break, standing up, walking around, stuff like that. And eventually after they were done grooming themselves, they kind of retired to the very back of their enclosure where we couldn't see them anymore. But the cheetahs are right in between the giraffes and the warthogs actually. So the cheetahs get to watch both the giraffes and the warthogs kind of walk around and do their thing. Probably offers a little bit of enrichment for the cheetahs, gives them something to watch and definitely something to smell and whatnot. So Stuff that they would smell uh, if they were out in the wild. These are the warthogs. So again, right next to the cheetahs, you probably can't see them because they were all the way in the very, very, very back corner and they were just laying in the shade. They weren't doing anything very interesting, um, but they're all the way in that back right hand corner. They have a pretty big enclosure, um, which was kind of cool to see. And there are a ton of turtles and tortoises <laughs> throughout all of the zoos that we went to, um, Animal Kingdom included. I felt like every exhibit was like, Look at this animal plus this kind of turtle. Look at this animal plus this kind of tortoise. Look at this animal. 
animal plus this kind of turtle. Like there's just turtles in every single habitat, um, which was kind of cool for like an I spy kind of thing. Cause we spent a lot of time like, oh, can we find this turtle? Can we find that turtle? Uh, the answer is no to a lot of them. We didn't find a lot of the turtles, but we spent a lot of time looking at the signs. So we knew that turtles were supposed to be in there. I was a little sad that this little cougar guy was napping in the shade, so I was not able to kind of see his face, and I'm not even really sure if you can see him on uh, the camera on film. I know what I'm looking for so I can kind of see him, but he was in that house, just snoozing, just laying down. But his exhibit was clearly more of a newer exhibit, like a newer built exhibit, because the wood didn't look quite as worn or anything like that. Um, and he had a pretty nice space, so I enjoyed that one. Then we made our way into the barnyard area. There was an alpaca in here. I don't know where he went. I wasn't too worried about seeing him having worked with alpacas. They're not all that exciting to me. Um, he was a brown alpaca, <laughs> but he was pretty cute. But the cutest little guy is this guy right here, this little goat. So there was a bunch of goats in here. Uh, well, I say a bunch, I saw three, I think. Uh, and you could pet them if they came up to the fence and they were very willing to come up to the fence because they all think you have food and then get very uninterested when you don't have food because <laughs> I didn't have food in my hand, but they were very interested in my camera. So they came over to say hi. You can see that was one, there's two, and then there's this big guy with the horns on his head just hanging out. So this is more of the kitty area. In the center of this little barnyard area is their gift shop. Very, very small gift shop, um, but it was cool to kind of walk around. And then we make our way over to, this is another one of my favorite birds. So this is the kookaburra. You can see him up in the left-hand corner, just kind of grooming. He's got a little spot of sunlight there that he's hanging out in. There was also um, the tawny bird mouth, frog mouth. That's what it is. I knew it was some animal mouth, but I wasn't able to see it. Uh, in there. We just were able to see the kookaburra. And now we're moving over to some reptiles. So this building that we're going to walk around completely first has a lot of outside reptiles. So this guy being one of them, you can see him right there in the center of the screen, hanging out on the ground. If you kind of ignore my reflection, filming uh, against the glass was really difficult because the sun was out and the reflections were really bad. But that was that guy. Then this is a giant Aldebra tortoise. And then there's some crocodiles. And that big building that's right behind is actually the Herp building. So there's a whole bunch more reptiles, amphibians inside that building, which we'll get to in a minute because we walk over to the bears first, I believe. Uh, but this Aldebra giant tortoise had a very roomy and spacious habitat. And I liked his little house. <laughs> it was very cute. And then we have a variety of different crocodiles and alligators. And what I really liked most about these habitats is honestly, I feel like they just put up a fence around a section of land and put the animals in there because that is exactly how these habitats look. They really just look like they're out in the Florida wetlands, you know, and that's that's exactly what they need. And that's what their habitats look like. So it was pretty hard finding all of them. I did find all of them. So let's see if you can too. There is an animal in um, almost every shot of these crocodile habitats. So hopefully you guys can find them. This one's going to be the easiest because you can see he's right there in the sun with his head in the shade, uh, keeping his eyes protected, but his his back is sunning himself. Um, but yeah, these habitats were really cool. They just had really lush overgrowth, uh, all kinds of natural water and stuff like that. And then before we get to the bears, these little guys, these little monkeys, they're so cute. These guys actually had a dual habitat as well. You can see right over there to the right is that tube. And then in the back, there's more of like a square tunnel um, that connects to this habitat and they can go back and forth. And so there is up in the top right hand corner. Actually, it's more like the top middle of that enclosure there. What you're looking at is one of those little monkeys. They're the ones that look like little old men with white hair. <laughs> I think they have, they're absolutely funny looking, um, but they're very cute to watch like run around because they jump all over the place and they like fit in the palm of your hand. They're, they're really adorable. 
On our way to the Bears, one last stop at the Bald Eagle. These guys were kind of just hanging out, but I really liked their habitat, how open it was. Um, they don't really need too much, but there was no enclosing them at all. They were in this giant open habitat and just kind of hanging out. So you can see there's one up on the platform underneath the canopy area, and then there's one on the floor down to the right. You basically can just spot their heads because their, their white bald heads are what stick out. Uh, but they were just kind of hanging out. Then we go into the Florida black bear habitat, which is all done up like somebody's house. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that makes it look like somebody lives here. And then the bears, you can peek at them through the windows. You can also walk out and around to go look at them. There was two in this enclosure, one of which was getting his yummy snacks out of the box right in front of us. Um, he was eating a, uh, what is that? A cantaloupe. He was eating a cantaloupe, but they don't eat the skins. They just eat the fruit. So he was scraping out the fruit on the cantaloupe there. Very, very cute. And then last but not least, we're going into the Herp building. So this has a whole bunch of different reptiles and amphibians, most of which I was actually able to spot. I'll get close up to a couple of them that were kind of easy for me to get close up to. But I also was there right at the time where one of the keepers was cleaning some of the venomous snake cages. So if you've ever wondered how keepers clean venomous snake cages, uh, you'll find out in just a moment because I stopped and I filmed him. Um, he didn't seem to mind, so hopefully he didn't mind. But as I was walking by, he opened up the back door and then just started cleaning. So I figured I would sit there and, uh, and film it for you guys. So these are, again, a bunch of just individual little habitats. If I liked doing interiors in any game, I would probably um, attempt something like this, but I just, I don't, <laughs> I don't like interiors enough. Um, but you can see here, he is coming in to clean the, I forget what this is. Do I get the actual sign? It's some sort of uh, venomous snake. I know that, but I don't remember. I think it's a rattlesnake of some kind. Uh, but yeah, he gets very angry. Oh, there you go. It's a cotton mouth. It's a Florida cotton mouth. He lifts up the water, brings it out. He's going to give him a nice mist spray to keep everything nice and humid in there for him. Um, but yeah, the snake just kind of hangs out in the back corner. And as long as the keeper doesn't act threatening or try to move him or anything like that, he just kind of stays in the back corner. Still terrifying. Um, I don't actually know if I would work with venomous animals, venomous snakes rather. Um, I love working with predators and I love working with dangerous animals, but I, there's something about venomous animals that just is scary to me. <laughs> and I love snakes. I really do love snakes. I just don't know if I would want to work, work with venomous snakes. Uh, but there you go. So then he just sprays the whole thing down. He flips the little uh, house back on top of him when he's done. And then that is it. Nice, clean, uh, clean water, clean snake enclosure, humid snake enclosure. Uh, and then he moved on to the next one and he did the same thing over and over again. Then we have our Gila monsters. This guy was napping as though he was dead, but I promise he was not. He was just napping, hanging off the rock like that. Whereas the ones in the back were very, very active and kind of walking around. I liked the coloring on the one in the back here. You can see all the splotchiness uh, really blends in with that desert sand very well. Um, and then we have a little turtle. I forget what turtle it is. It's some sort of leaf turtle, but he was just kind of sitting there uh, staring at me. So I got up close and uh, that's pretty much it. So it's a small little zoo. It only took us about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Actually, it was probably more like two hours uh, to see everything. Honestly, we could have walked by and seen it in like an hour and 15 or so, but we stopped and looked at everything and really watched the animals, uh, waited for some of them to move and see what they were going to do and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, all of all and all, excuse me as I trip over my words, I really really enjoyed this zoo. So if you guys are in the area, I really do highly recommend uh, checking it out. They have lots of cool animals and uh, it's really inspiring. I hope this brought you some sort of inspiration uh, for your zoo projects or your prehistoric kingdom builds, whatever you may be working on. Uh, let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. If you don't know what to say, just leave your favorite emoji. Just let me know you were watching and that you enjoyed. I really do appreciate it. Again, leave a like and hit that subscribe button. I've got two more vlogs coming out as well as a few more build videos coming out in the near future. There's lots coming to the channel that I'm very, very excited about. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!